From outside, the Delray Cafe doesn't look like much. A shuttered business with a for sale sign, a weathered patio, and a boat in the empty lot next door. But walk inside, and there's a well-stocked bar, a plastic menu board displaying cheap fried food, and walls lined with Tigers and Red Wings jerseys. It looks like a dive bar that's going to open in a few hours. Except for the banquet tables covered in random knickknacks left over from a family garage sale. Well, do you see anything you like? (laughs) That's Les Pafford, owner of the Delray Cafe. When business suffered, he had to close the bar about five years ago. And now, like the rest of the neighborhood, it sits waiting, waiting to see if it might come back to life. During Prohibition, this neighborhood thrived. There was a strip on Jefferson Avenue that was like a little downtown area. It was here that Delray Cafe was born. John Nagy grew up in the neighborhood and spent some time at the cafe as a kid in the 1960s before Pafford owned the place. My dad and mom used to uh, porter for the Delray Cafe, for the original owner. They'd go down at 2 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning and go down there and clean the place up. Nagy describes the Delray Cafe as a landmark. Well, everybody sort of recognized it as a, <clears throat> as a place to go back in, the, back in its day. I mean, it was, a, it was a neighborhood hangout. In the 1970s, Les Pafford, whose wife coincidentally is related to Nagy, was living in the area working as a salesman. And we used to hit most of the bars on Friday night. At some point, he decided he wanted to buy a bar. And I said if I ever bought one, it would be this one here because it was the biggest. In 1977, his dream came true. Pafford became the owner of Delray Cafe. Oh, you want to go upstairs? Yeah. The place looks like an old party hall. Pafford says that's how it was used at one point. This is the first room. This is where we had parties at for 50 people. Upstairs holds over 100 people. Downstairs, outside, we got a capacity for about 300. See the stage up there, how nice it is? The stage hosted bands, comedians, karaoke, even a few so-called lingerie parties. Did the girls keep their lingerie on, or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were, you could, uh, you know, you could, they had a top on and a bottom. But that was about it. <laughs> Maybe high heels. <laughs> okay, that aside, the space actually looks like it's ready for a Friday night. All it needs is customers. But they're hard to come by in this part of town. Delray has suffered extreme population loss since the 1970s. Some houses were bought out to make way for a wastewater treatment plant. Nearby plants closed and people moved away. Then the community became isolated by the expansion of I-75 and bridge closures over the Rouge River. Construction workers became Pafford's main clientele from the 1990s onward. But there weren't enough of them to sustain the business. All the construction guys, they, they see me out here cutting the grass and everything. They'll stop. Hey, Les, when are you going to open up? You know, hurry up. We ain't got no place to eat. <laughs> Delray Cafe was the last place that served food on this former downtown strip of Jefferson Avenue. So I'm, I'm waiting to see how, how, how long it's going to take the bridge to get going. You know, we're supposed to be 10,000 construction workers. And with that many hungry and thirsty workers around... Pafford could probably sell the place for more than he could now. Or he could even go back into business himself. These are the thoughts that run through his head. So you never know, we might open up again. But just two weeks later, Pafford stands in front of a pile of charred rubble between two black walls, rain sprinkling down on top of it. Hi, this is what's left of the Delray Cafe. On the eve of Devil's Night, the cafe burned down. Pafford believes it was arson. He has his theories, but there's no formal police investigation. First the roof caved in, then the top floor. Well, it's really, you can't tell, but you, it doesn't look that big from when it's empty now. I mean, it looked a lot bigger inside, you know. Yeah. The reopening or sale of the cafe was supposed to fund Pafford and his wife's retirement. Now, that's all lost. And... There will be no insurance payout. Pafford stopped paying the fee after a disputed claim. But with this fire, he didn't just lose money. What did you lose that that didn't have, like, a price? My heart. (laughs) 
Delray Cafe had become a part of Pafford's life and identity. I uh, told some people at the gym I came from this morning that I was signing uh, autographs on the bricks and selling them for five dollars <laughs> and they got a kick out of that you know but that was just a joke but my grandkids all took bricks and uh we'll probably put on there from 1977 to 2014 for you know when i'm gone they'll always remember me by uh looking at the brick you know for most people their memories of delray cafe will have to survive without any kind of physical reminder but the residents who've lived here are probably used to that by now, with so many businesses, houses, and people already gone. As for the bridge, some land has already been cleared to make way for it. Construction is scheduled to be complete by 2020. In the meantime, the community waits. I'm Laura Herberg, WDET News.